I said, so we did uh, this uh, uh, benzene thing and uh, we're almost done with it, actually. It's, uh, it's just that you have this uh, benzene electron cloud and we did uh, reaction mechanisms like for electrophilic substitution, uh, you needed a catalyst, if we are three, you can, uh, you had electrophilic substitution happening. And then you had uh, uh, the nitration of benzene, which was with concentrated nitric acid, which was kind of the same reaction, except that an NO2 plus one uh, electrophile was created using sulfuric acid. And then what did we do with it? Uh, acylation, alkylation, we did the 246 directing groups, which were benzene derivatives uh, somewhere over here, TK. And then we talked about electrophilic substitution of uh, of arenes, which were 246 directing. You would get the bromine attached on the second and the fourth carbon atom. Same goes for nitration. For phenols, the reaction was much, much faster because uh, the electron density of benzene was pretty high. So the electrophile was very strongly attracted to it. And you had a very fast reaction. You didn't need any catalyst. And you, and rubines would get attached on all, all of the carbon atoms. And then we had the, so then we had the nitration of phenols nitration is this one so i told you that you can have it with dilute nitric acid or you can have it with concentrated nitric acid so uh, the reaction all no need for sulfuric acid and no need for temperature being 55 uh, phenols are way more reactive so the reaction would happen very very vigorously and this was all that we did. And uh, the last thing that we did was uh, what? As so we talked about chlorobenzene, and I told you that uh, electrophilic substitution for that is going to be slow. And about C5 directing groups as well. We talked about them. We talked about, uh, they, I mean, we talked about benzene being kind of inactive. It's got low electron density overall, less uh, attraction for electrophiles. So three, five, for all three, five directing groups, the reactions are going to be very, very slow. So is this all clear that you've got electrophilic substitution, uh, two reactions, bromination or chlorination, and the second one is nitration. Normal benzene has different conditions. Activated benzenes have different conditions, and there are two kinds of activated benzene. Uh, arenes are kind of like similar to benzene, and you've got phenols and phenylamine, which are very active. So. And you had C5 directing groups, which were kind of very inactive. So is this all clear? Yes, sir. Yes. TK, all you have to do is just uh, just revise all of this. Uh, now, now, let's try and cover the the other stuff. See, and let me just open a. of the syllabuses so we can cover that point wise. So this is right. Now there's uh, there's a couple of reactions of benzene still left. Uh, so we'll just leave somewhere. It's this one. It's just weird. weird. I'm, I'm just going to take uh, those things. Uh, we did all of this alkylation, uh, complete oxidation of the side chain to give. So this one is left. So I mean, this one has nothing to do with electrophilic substitution. So let's uh, talk about this one. This one is, remember, it's got nothing to do with whatever we've done so far. So this is oxidation of adenes. of arenes. Uh, remember, arenes were those uh, were those benzene uh, molecules, 
which had, let me copy a benzene. That's it, so arenes were were those benzene molecules which had a carbon side chain. So for example, they've got uh, they've got CH2 and they've got uh, any benzene with a carbon side chain. That's an area. If you try to oxidize this uh, with, let's say, acidified KMnO4, so the conditions for oxidation are uh, we're using acidified KMnO4 and reflux. plus reflux. And if you do that, uh, what's going to happen is uh, the oxidation of edines is going to be like this. That everything kind of remains the same, except that the carbon chains kind of go missing. No matter how big the carbon chain is, I mean, the carbon chain is going to completely break off. And what's going to be left in its point, uh, in its position is going to be a carboxylic acid. So, so no matter how big the carbon chain is, it would still end up forming benzoic acid. That's, that is what's, what's going to happen. Okay, so no matter how big the carbon chain is, it's going to end up forming benzoic acid. So is this clear? It's a simple reaction. That's it. Everyone, is this clear? Yes, sir. Uh, no need for any background knowledge. TK, just remember, whenever you see a carbon chain and you oxidize uh, a benzene, uh, that particular part, everything up, uh, next to the carbon chain breaks off and that carbon changes into a carboxylic acid. So that's one. Uh, complete oxidation of the side chain to give benzoic acid. Uh, then you've got hydrogenation of benzene ring. So you can, uh, what you can do is, the, the next one is also a simple reaction. So this one is hydrogenation. Of benzene. Now remember, benzene is like is like a it's, it's like double bonds. It gets like an alkene, so it kind of gets hydrogenated like an alkene. Like if you have if you have this uh, benzene, and if you hydrogenate it uh, for hydrogenation you need uh, you need a couple of things uh, you got you need nickel plus h2 catalyst the nickel is the catalyst h2 gas is the reagent and the temperature is around 152 to 200 degrees centigrade so what happens to a benzene ring is that it simply changes into an alkane, a cycloalkane. So it's going to have these carbon atoms, but the double bond electron cloud is going to be completely missing. There's going to be nothing there, except that the hydrogen, each carbon atom would, would be bonded to four atoms. And it will turn it turn into a cycloalkane. The, the double bonds, uh, which were delocalized, they would all be gone. Remember, carbon had a spare uh, electron, which is why there was an electron cloud. But of, all of them are going to get used up. There, there would be hydrogen atoms coming in, and the electron cloud would be completely missing now. Do you get this clear? Yes, sir. 
ठीक है सो दैट इज हाइड्रोजनेशन ऑफ एल्कीन्स और सॉरी बेंजीन जस्ट लाइक एल्कीन्स इलेक्ट्रोफिलिक सब्स्टिट्यूशन डिड दैट मैकेनिज्म डिड दैट इज वेल इंटरप्रेट द डिफरेंस इन रिएक्टिविटी बिटवीन क्लोरोबेंजीन एंड आई मीन दैट्स वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट एट द मोमेंट जस्ट स्टिक टू बेंजीन फॉर अ सेकंड uh as about halogenation uh one thing that you should remember I mean, i'll just write a simple point over here that is that is that just remember that the free radical substitution that you did in uh did in as that was an as reaction see yeah, that was uh, one of your as uh, reactions now the reason we are studying that reaction is because they want us to differentiate between electrophilic substitution where the chlorine gets bonded to the benzene ring and we uh, we need to and when does chlorine get substituted onto the carbon chain theek hai so so in free radical substitution hydrogen atoms they are substituted on the alkyl chain any carbon chain not just alkanes any carbon chain you got cl2 plus uv light and you have uh, let's see if i just copy this i got a benzene and the benzene has a carbon chain ch2 so if this undergoes a free radical substitution uh now electrophilic substitution requires catalyst so over here what's going to happen is that uh, in free radical substitution what's going to happen is this is molecule So, so this molecule over here uh you could get ch2 cl so you could have cl getting substituted onto the carbon chain right so just remember this thing that normal uv light reactions they the hydrogen atoms they get substituted onto the onto the carbon chain not on the benzene For benzene, we did. Uh, you had different conditions. You needed FeCl3 as a catalyst, and then the the benzene hydrogen atoms would get substituted. Is that also clear? Yeah. Okay. So remember that. And uh, what's next? Uh, uh, just benzene. Just focus on benzene. Now we did the electrophilic substitution of enes. That's done. That's done. Uh, now we've got phenols. T is just focusing on benzene at the moment. Uh, tolerance, etc. That's also. Primary amines. Uh, is there any benzene? Okay, we're almost done with benzene reactions. That's it. Uh, that's polymerization. Let me just let me just go through this one. The uh, phenylamine with bromine with nitrous acid to give. Uh, I mean, we did we did the reaction with with bromine. We did that. Uh, so okay, let's we're we're done with uh we're done we're done with benzene reactions. The next 
thing. Take it. Just remember electrophilic substitution. These are the few reactions right at the end: hydrogenation of benzene and the oxidation of uh, arenes. So let's move on now. And this time, uh, and let me let me even change the board. Take it. So this is this is all benzene. You can let me share the board link. I mean, somebody was asking for it. Just one second. Just one second. So I'm, I'm just going to start a new board. So we're going to do a few comparisons now. Okay, so here's a here's moving on from benzene. So, uspe pichle mein koi questions nahi hai. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, is that all clear? I'll send a PDF for that as well. So now moving on yeah. from that, so now moving on from that, another thing they're going to ask you about is uh, the comparison of hydrolysis. There would be a couple of comparisons. Take it just a second. So there are going to be a couple of comparisons, which they, which they they would be looking for, and the comparison would be. So comparison of hydrolysis. And what they're going to be looking for when they're talking about comparison of hydrolysis is they'll be comparing three reactions, three different compounds and their and their reactions. Now those three compounds are number one, your uh, acyl chlorides. Uh, but let's start with with chlorobenzene. Okay, that's number one. Number two is your normal halogenoalkanes. You've got three different chlorine-related compounds. So you got a halogen alkane, and the third one they're going to be talking about is uh, an acyl chloride. So three compounds and three comparisons and detailed comparisons. You can not just the first one, chlorobenzene. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to briefly first tell you. The first one is you're not going to have any hydrolysis for the first one. Uh, just a second. So the first one is you're not going to have any hydrolysis. No hydrolysis. We'll understand. I mean, we don't even know at the moment what is hydrolysis, but I'm just writing it down. No hydrolysis. 
And this this one over here has got very very vigorous reaction or very vigorous hydrolysis. So it's going to hydrolyze with cold water. I mean, hydrolysis is any reaction with water. So, so it reacts, it's got a vigorous reaction with cold water. Uh, the middle one has, I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a, a general trend. So the middle one is going to have a reaction that's going to be, uh, let me just draw the trend first. Okay, that's the trend that's happening taking place uh, from no hydrolysis to a very vigorous hydrolysis. The middle one has a reaction. You've already studied that reaction. That's uh, for halogenoalkanes, uh, nucleophilic substitutions. Uh, you did study this. This was this was the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. Okay, we're going to go over them once more. And I'm just trying to write the summary at the moment. Uh, this one would be, um, uh, you need NOH aqueous for this. And you need reflux for this. Okay, that's SN1, SN2 mechanism, and it's going to be, a, a, it's going to be reflux. And uh, you, have, you have to study the mechanism of this one as well. This is known as uh, electrophilic. Electrophilic addition. Uh, not, not electrophilic addition, it's uh, known as an addition elimination reaction. It's known as a nucleophilic addition elimination. And let's also uh, briefly over, uh, go through this. Uh, I mean, what are these compounds? Which compounds are we talking about in the first place? Okay, I'm writing down a summary, but who are these compounds? The first one is a chlorobenzene. So I'll just bring in a benzene. And it's got to have As that's that's the first one. So it's a it's a benzene and it's got uh, it's got a chlorine with it. Do you remember the first question is it absolutely has no hydrolysis, no reaction with water. The second one is your normal halogenoalkane that you studied in AS. Uh, uh, what's a normal halogenoalkane? It's got uh, it could be a primary halogenoalkane or a secondary halogenoalkane. It's going to have a halogen in, attached to a carbon chain. And it's going to be a polar bond. Carbon would be partial positive, Cl would be partial negative. So we're going to go over this once more in a lot more, lot more detail. Now, acyl chlorides are kind of really new to you. Acyl chlorides are that you're going to have a CH3 which would be attached to double bond O and ACL as well. So that is what your acyl group is. And it's also a highly polar, I mean, it's a very polar carbon atom. Uh, the Cl is partial negative and the oxygen is also partial, partial negative. So that's, a, that's what an acyl chloride is. So three chlorine compounds. One is chlorine bonded to a to a benzene. The other one is chlorine bonded to a uh, carbon chain, and the third one is chlorine bonded to a acetyl bond. That's known as an acyl chloride. Okay. Yeah. This one has vigorous reaction. This one has absolutely no reaction. And the middle one is the SN one SN two mechanism, which is kind of somewhere in the middle, uh, which you've already studied. One by one, we're going to do the comparison. Let's assume. Is this clear? The types of uh, molecules we're, we're going to compare. Is this clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. 
اچھا اب یہ کہ لیٹ اسٹارٹ ود فرسٹ ون اینڈ دا کوشچن از دیکھو ٹو آسک یو فار دا ریزنز آف فرسٹ دیٹ وائی از دا فرسٹ ون ناٹ ری ایکٹنگ ود واٹر ود اینی سورٹ آف سورٹ آف واٹر وائی از اٹ ری ایکٹنگ ود وائس مائنس ون سو دیٹس دا فرسٹ پارٹ سو لیٹس ٹاک اباؤٹ آپشن نمبر ون that chlorobenzene ha- has no hydrolysis and what is the reason that you're going to write down so no hydrolysis of chlorobenzene and the reason is that it's not going to be attracted to to nucleophiles uh here's your chlorobenzene molecule and as you can see so here's a chlor- chlorobenzene molecule now for water to be attracted to it remember water is a is a highly polar molecule so for water to be attracted to it there's got to be a positive positive center somewhere which is completely absent over here you know for example it's uh, either it's water or oh minus one let's talk about oh minus one let's say i add nh and you've got oh minus one this oh minus one is not going to be attracted to this thing because because cl has an electron donating effect cl has got these lone pairs three of them actually and these lone pairs are going to overlap with benzene the electron clouds the electron density on the benzene is going to be pretty high and there's going to be a lot of overlapping happening so what would happen is that the the, the electrons are going to get mixed up the lone pairs over here would mix with benzene's electron cloud uh, all the other electrons would get pushed to the other side so it's it's a 246 directing group but it's also at the same time a withdrawing group as well not only would it would its electrons mix with benzene electron cloud it's going to pull some of the benzene electron cloud towards itself as well so the 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 bond over here would would be very very strong it's going to have a very high negative charge density which is why the oh minus 1 is not going to be attracted to it i mean usually when cl is bonded to something it's it results in a positive center a positive carbon atom but not in this case because uh, there's this electron cloud over here the, there's the lone pairs over here uh, the electron cloud on benzene and the lone pairs over here they start overlapping and they start mixing up and you got lots of electrons over here so is this point clear everyone yes or no is this clear yes so is this clear so hail minahil is this clear yes sir you look better clear yes so that's why it, it doesn't have any reactions with either oh minus 1 or even with water molecules like water molecules are not going to go close to it like the water the lone pairs on water are negatively charged so they would absolutely have no interest in going close to this thing or any anyway, any way close to it i mean all the places it's got electrons benzene electron cloud cl's got these lone pairs so there's too many electrons over here so the other lone pairs are going to be repelled so there's absolutely no reaction okay that's the first one and they're going to ask you for an explanation for this so the explanation for this would be what you're going to state is that the lone pairs so the lone pairs on the lone pair of electrons of cl they overlap with benzene's pi electron cloud and when they overlap with benzene's pi electron cloud uh, the ccl bond becomes stronger not only does it become stronger it's got more negative charge density and 
then has greater negative charge density. Which is why nucleophiles are going to be repelled. So absolutely no reaction. So nucleophiles are going to be absolute uh, are going to be repelled. Uh, they're not even going to be close to it. So you'll be asked about this. Why do chlorobenzenes not react with water or they don't undergo hydrolysis? So it's a pretty uh, strong CCL bond because of the extra electrons overlapping from both sides. Okay. I'm now moving on to the next one, which is uh, the, I mean, it's just going to be a revision of what you've already studied, halogenoalkanes. Why do they undergo uh, these reactions? So let me just... So what about the second one? Halogenoalkanes, number two. Right, we know that halogenoalkanes, uh, they tend to react. And uh, you need an OH aqueous and an efflux. They're not going to react with water, but they would react with an OH aqueous and an reflux. This is what's going to happen. You'll have a so you'll have a halogenoalkane. And it's going to be a simple. Substitution reaction uh, where if you add OH minus one, those would be your nucleophiles coming from any OH aqueous and reflux. What would happen is that uh, the CL would get knocked out. And OH is going to take its place. See, that was the reaction that you studied. So which uh, which halogens had a faster reaction, Cl or iodine? Anyway, it's a substitution reaction. It's a nucleophilic substitution reaction to be specific. Does it even remember okay, which of the halogenoalkanes, if it's Cl, Br, or I, who has a faster reaction? CL, I think CL. No, it's, it's actually iodine because it forms very weak bonds. CL is kind of smaller, smaller atoms make stronger bonds. So CL is kind of a smaller atom. So if you've got RCL, that's, uh, that has the slowest reaction. If you've got uh, RBR, the reaction would be faster because the BR bond would break a lot faster. Iodine would be the fastest. And this one over here would be kind of. Just, so this one over here would be kind of slow. So. Just, so you'll have. Uh, uh, I mean, chlorines. Fluorine would have the slowest because its bond would be very strong. It would be very hard for the, for the nucleophile, which is this one. You get pretty hard for the nucleophile to actually uh, break the bond. Now, uh, just one more thing. I'm going to add uh, the previous things that you studied. Uh, so, yeah. so what you've studied is this primary halogenoalkanes. So we leave that at primary halogenoalkanes. 
that was an SM2 mechanism. TK will discuss that in the next class. Uh, you must know what a primary halogenoalkane is, that it's got a CH3, just one carbon chain. So just, just one, one carbon chain, that's it. And you had a secondary halogenoalkane. That is your SN1. That is going to be not secondary, actually, I wanted to talk about it. Tertiary halogen alkane. That was SN1. So you have your tertiary halogen alkane. And what would happen in that case was, uh, that would happen in that case was that it would have three carbon chains. So both the mechanisms are different. We're gonna discuss the mechanisms in the next class now, TK. So let's continue next time, TK. Just remember we will be comparing the hydrolysis of halogen related compounds. We question any, any questions? No, sir. No, sir. So TK, let's continue tomorrow. Okay, love this. Love this. Thank you.